In this video, I'm going to discuss Assignment 5. Uh, before we take a look at the assignment, let me show you the workbook that it's based on. Now, this assignment is different from the ones we've been doing because instead of writing some code from scratch, uh, you're mostly going to modify an already existing program. So this is called File Loop Demo, and it works with, with a um, user form. And basically, uh, there's two parts to the assignment. And for the first part, we're processing a file of numbers that we read um, from. And let's just find it. So I've got it over here in my course materials. Here it is. It's called Numbers. And um, Here's the contents of the file, and it tells me how many numbers I've read, how many were bigger than 10, and you can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, uh, not 10, 6, uh, numbers bigger than 10. This one's equal, so it didn't get counted. It finds the sum of the odd numbers, it finds the average value of the numbers, and it finds the minimum, the smallest one, which happens to be 5. All right, let's take a look at the code and how it does all that. So we'll go to the Developer tab, Visual Basic, and view the code. All right. So here I'm um, setting up some variables to do what I want to do. So I want to find the sum of all the numbers because I need the average. So I'll have that and I'll set it to zero initially. I want the sum of the odd numbers, so I have a variable for that, also zero initially. I want to count how many numbers, so I'll start that one out as zero as well. And you'll see that count is an integer, whereas these sums are doubles. I need the count and the sum to get the average. And finally, I want to count the ones greater than 10. So I'll make a variable for that as well and set it equal to zero. And I also have a variable for finding the minimum. Okay, so um, to get the name of the file to use, I'm going to read it using my get open file name application. Now this is using a filter. I'm going to remove this before I post this because it doesn't work on Macs, at least not in the current version we've been using. Um, so I'll remove the filter and you'll have to pick through all the files. The other thing is that the file to use for input is posted as a zip file uh, to overcome some problems we've had uploading text files and then being able to download them from D2L. So just be sure to unzip it before you use it. You'll be using that file for your input in your assignment. Okay, so um, all this other stuff is what we've seen in our other uh, programs where we're reading from a file. So I'm opening my file name and I'm going to be reading uh, one item at a time. So I'll read it and I'll call it num. So notice that here I, I gave my file the number one. Naturally, it's the first and only one I'm going to be using. And my loop goes while not end of file. So you'll see that this loop um, is fairly big. Actually, goes down to here. So let's Here's my loop statement that ends the, the do while. And let's look at what's happening here. Um, I read a number, and then I'm going to do a bunch of processing on the number, and then come back and read another number. So let's look at all the things I do. The first thing is I um, put my number into the list box. So you saw that the first thing that happened was there was a list of all the numbers that I read. And that's happening right here. As I read the number, I put it in the list box. I add the number to the running total, the sum that I'm keeping. And I also want the sum of the odd numbers. Now to do that, I have to know when a number is odd that I read. And to test if a number is odd, that's the same as not even. That is not divisible by 2. Remember the mod function, which um, tests the remainder. And if the remainder is 0 when you divide by 2, it's even. If it's not 0, then it's odd. 
So if it's not zero, if I take the number and divide by two and the remainder is not zero, then I put it, I add it to my sum of odd numbers. Okay, um, I add one to my count of how many numbers I've read. So that'll get increased by one every time I do this loop. And now I want to also count the numbers that are greater than 10. So to do that, what I do is I go, okay, um, if a number is greater than 10, then um, I'm going to increment this count greater than 10 variable, otherwise I'm not. Finally, I want to keep track of the smallest number seen so far. So um, the way I do that is like this. If we haven't seen any numbers yet, that is, if the count equals 1, then the one we're looking at is clearly the smallest one so far. So in that case, I just set my variable minimum to be that number. Otherwise, what I want to do is see if my number I'm looking at now is less than the one that's the smallest I've seen so far. If it is, then I have a new minimum and I set the variable min to be that new number. When I get through looking at all the numbers, the smallest one I've seen so far is going to be in this variable minimum, and that'll be my minimum. Now here's the end of the loop. Notice that all the code that does something to each element of the, each number that we read from the file, each piece of code that has to look at each number we read from the file has to be inside this loop. Now when the loop finishes, then I'm ready to do my extra printing and some extra computation. So first of all, I'm going to um, make sure there was at least one element in the file so I don't end up dividing by zero. So if the count was bigger than zero, then I'll do all this stuff, otherwise I'll say the file was empty. So the first thing I do is take the sum of all the numbers divided by the count, and that gives me the average. Print a blank line, then I say um, how many numbers I read, telling the count. How many numbers greater than 10 I read, um, the sum of the odd numbers, the average value, printing the thing I just computed here, um, and the minimum value, printing that variable min. And then to finish up, I have my little jump out if there was an error, and um, close the file. Okay, now let's see what you have to do. You're going to start with this piece of code. Besides finding the minimum, you're also going to find the maximum. So what I want to say about that is that the code for finding the maximum is very similar to this code for finding the minimum. You're going to need a variable up here called max as integer, and then you're going to need a, to write a piece of code similar to this if statement, very, very similar, except it's looking for the biggest number we've seen so far instead of the smallest one. So think about that. It, it's a tweak to this code, and you'll be able to do it right. Okay. The next thing, we want the sum of the numbers divisible by 5. Okay, here we found the sum of the odd numbers, so it's the ones not divisible by 2. Actually, what I'm going to do here is show you, suppose I wanted to get the sum of the numbers divisible by 3. I'm going to put a variable for that. I'll call it sum div 3 as double. Okay. Um, I'll set it equal to zero initially. Oops. And then I'm going to want a piece of code very similar to this. So right here I'll put um, if num mod 3 equals zero. So I know it's divisible by 3. Then sum div 3 equals sum div 3 plus num. And if, make sure you, you indent things nicely. Then down here, I have to add a place to print that. Um, 
nice way to do it might be to just copy this and paste so sum of numbers divisible by three and uh, leave a space so it's not all jammed together and I'll put some div three. Okay, and I'll save and um, let's go back over to Excel and try running it. Uh, okay, process file, uh, numbers, open. Okay, and now you can see I've got the sum of the numbers divisible by three. It says it's 54. You can check that. All right, you're going to do the same thing, but for numbers divisible by 5. And um, let's go back to the code here. The other thing you need to do is count um, the, the numbers greater than 12. All right, well, I have an example here where I'm counting the numbers greater than 10. You simply have to adapt this code. Uh, keep this, but write your own piece of code that counts the numbers that are greater than 12. Okay, and that finishes the first part of the homework. The second part is to write a little for loop uh, and a do while loop. Now you'll see on the user interface, um, if I go look at the form, there are buttons here for the for loop and the while loop. So you're going to write an event procedure for each of these buttons. And the idea is the user will put a number in here, like say three, and when you push for loop, it will use a for loop to write your name three times in the window. Um, and if you put a number in here and push while loop, then it'll use a while loop to write your name that number of times in here. So um, there are models for this in the worksheet program that, that you have and um, using some of the code that was shown in class in the description of how to write a for loop and a while loop. So you just need a loop that runs a fixed number of times, whatever the number of times is that's put in this box. So that's a natural for for loop. And then the while loop is just going to be very, very similar. So look at the code we at the talk um, about how to write a while loop that does the same thing as a for loop. And you'll just use the same kind of code for that. Okay, so good luck with the assignment.